So it's been a while since I made a video about how to connect Dialogflow to the real-time database. And back then, uh, Firestore, the Firestore database was still in beta mode, but now it's out of beta mode and it's actually the recommended database to use by the Google Cloud team. So whenever you start a new project, they recommend uh, you to use Firestore because it's got more features, it's more performant and also more scalable, as I believe. Um, which is why I thought it's about time that I made another video about how to connect Dialogflow to Firestore. So for demo purposes, I'm going to be using the same bot that I used previously, which just asked the user for a name. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into the get name intent, which recognizes the name and just enable the webhook call here. It's already enabled as I can see. And then step number two, go into the fulfillment and uh, activate the inline editor. First of all, usually those um, dependencies are a little bit outdated. So I'm going to use this snippet here that I prepared. Uh, I'm going to put a link to the code into the video description so you can uh, just copy and paste it as well or go and research what the latest versions of those libraries are. Anyway, so let's go back to this and delete some of the boilerplate code that we are not using. We don't need those console logs. We don't need most of this. Um, and now let's start by mapping the intent that we just looked at, which is called get name to an intent handler, which I will call get name handler. And we still have to create it. So I'm going to use this function body here. That's going to be my handler. And now as a first step, I will just say, thank you. And then we'll insert the name of the person. Okay. Now the only thing that's missing is the name, which we can get from the agent object, agent of parameters dot name. And this grabs the name from the parameters and I'm going to hit deploy and we can already test this, but it's going to take a couple of seconds to deploy. So I'm already going to jump into the Firebase console and we are going to create an instance of the Firestore database. Let's see, let's see. I will, I need the name of my uh, uh, dialog flow agent here. So this, um, well, uh, rather I need the Google project ID. It's, it's this one, get name Firestore. Let's see if we can find it. Here it is. And now we want to create a database. So let's go to the database tab. And it's very colorful. As you can see, Firestore is promoted at the top and here's the call to action, create database. So we can leave this on. Let's do it in locked mode. I am based in Europe, so I would like to select Europe here, but apparently the project has already been created to be located in the US, so never mind. We're only going to save some names, so it's not about the performance here, really. So provisioning Cloud Firestore, let's give that a moment. And I was going to say this must be done deploying now, but it is still going on. In that case, let's go back here and finish the database setup. So in order to save data, we now need a collection. You can't save anything unless you create a collection and 
the data we're going to save is essentially just names. So I'm going to call the collection names. And then it's asking us to create a first document. I'm going to use the auto ID feature. And then the field will be name and the value will be just a random name. And this is our object, just a simple name name field and that's it now this is going to create the object and once we use the dialog for all agent we will then see that we're going to push more objects into this collection now this seems to have gone wrong i'm going to reload it is deployed so let's give it a go What's my name? Peter. Okay, thank you, Peter. So this works so far. Thank you, Peter. By the way, once you deploy it the, for the first time, any easy way to go to the Firebase, sorry, to go to the Google Cloud Console is to click this link here, which will open the logging, but you can also use the same menu here and then jump to the database. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to the really interesting part which is going to be creating the database connection it's super easy we'll use this library firebase admin which is already in the package.json by default we just need to require it sorry admin uh, so there we have it and then we need to call a method which is in a initialize app which will initialize with the uh, default credentials and then once we have that we can use the same to give us the firestore instance so let's pass that into the db constant and then we can use this one here so we have the db reference here what's the next level it's the collection level so we can grab the collection that we just created like this it's called names and then we will add a an object what does the object look like we already saw it when we created it in the cloud console it's just a simple name key that points to the name which is again coming from the parameter here hitting deploy again to give it a second just one thing I want to say here so add creates us a new object in the collection and we'll give it a random unique identifier we also have the option to specify the identifier I believe it's the doc function and then we can has a document ID here however since we're just saving names we don't really have a meaningful way of naming our object you might be thinking okay we could use the name but what if another so my name's Peter what if another Peter went ahead used the dialog flow agent and then where the database would override the first object that would would have been saved already when the first Peter logged on so this is why we're going to go with the add method which gives us a unique identifier each time okay successfully deployed let's see i need to reset the context typo hi hello what's your name it's peter not available so either there's an error or it's just hanging somewhere which is usually the case if you don't give it a couple of seconds after def finishing the deploy so let's do it again so yeah nothing i didn't change anything i just did it uh, tried it again and now it's actually replying again thank you peter which is a good sign so let's go and see what happened here and indeed 
we have the objects which were added. They actually were added, both of them. So that's great. Now we're basically done. I'm just going to do one more thing. If you remember from the previous video, the way this bot works is it's using the system dot given name intent here to recognize uh, people's names. But since the list of names in that system entity is limited, there's another fallback intent which uses the system any, and then we have a confirmation intent. So the only thing I want to do here as well, just for fun, is to enable the webhook, which is actually already enabled. And then we need the name of this confirmation intent, and we will add it to our webhook in the same manner here and map this intent to the same handler. And then the only thing we need to do, just like in my video about uh, the real-time database, in this case, we don't have the name in the parameter because it's only the confirmation where the user types yes. In this case, we can read the name from the context. So I'm just gonna do it like this. In the last video about real-time database, the uh, API here was still different. It was called get context, but this has changed now and it's dot context dot get. And the name of the context is awaiting name. Now we have the context and now again, we need to go into the context parameters and grab the name from here. So this should work nicely. Let's look at the logs quickly. What is deploying? Yes, I want to share all my data so Google can make their services better. So we only have the standard warning because I used the default credentials when I called initialize app, so no other errors. That's looking good. And now just waiting to deploy. There we go. Probably need to reset the context because now it's actually going to the fallback and it says, can you confirm that hi is your name? Well, no, that's not my name. So now let's use a more exotic name. And now it's going to the catch all intent. We've, we've, no, that's not the one we've mapped. Now it's asking me to confirm. Yes. And now we have the confirm name, yes. Great, and as we can see, it works because now we have the output here as in the other intent. And if there's no delays, then the object should be popping up any second here, unless now we have an error. This is still looking good. I'm just going to hit reload. Okay, we can't see the the other name here. It's probably going to take another couple of seconds, but anyway, no errors, so you can believe me that it worked. So I hope this video was useful and I will pop the link to the code in the description.